So joining me now is Ryan Farber. He is running for president in 2020. So Ryan, tons to talk about. Let's start with the obvious since you're, it's not a radio interview, you're on camera here, you're young. Very young. Yes, and are you a millennial? I am a millennial, I'm an older millennial. Okay, and so are you the only millennial running for president? I believe I'm the first one to officially declare for presidency. I know they've had others in the past, Mr. D's nuts is famously in 2016, but yes, first millennial. <laughs> okay, do you have experience in politics? Never run for office before. I'm very active in our local club. I live here in downtown Los Angeles, so very active in the East Area Progressive Democrat Club. Okay, got you. And so what possessed you to run for president? The real reason is actually my dad. Years ago, when I was a kid, my dad went and started a hedge fund. I know, gross. Definitely gross, but no, no. It depends. It depends. <laughs> you know, it is. Do you, do they contribute to to money in politics, etc.? There's good people. The, in yeah, hedge there's funds. there's good people. My dad, I would think, is one of them. Yeah. But started a hedge fund with a few people. Didn't really like what he was doing. Didn't think that they were doing the you know, ethical thing, to say mm -hmm. the least. Mm -hmm. So ends up leaving. A couple years go by, and paper gets delivered to my parents' house. Front page of the paper. This company is sold for $2.5 billion, which my dad at one point was a 25% shareholder. So, wow. very sad, the look on his face, I'll, I'll never forget it. It's just the ultimate look of sadness. Uh -huh. But a couple years go by again, same paper gets delivered to my parents' house. The CEO of that company is going to prison for tax fraud. Now, my dad could have said, I'll ignore what's going on here and be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And he said no. We have nothing because of this. My dad is uncorrupted, and I'm uncorrupted because his blood runs through me. That's what has inspired me to run, and that's why I'm here. Well, I love it. What's your uh, campaign theme? Our campaign slogan is America Connected. Uh, we came up with it because we think everything really binds us together. Uh, whether it's the opioid crisis that's been sweeping across this country, we're all directly or indirectly affected. Too many of us have tasted lead in the water, too many of us unjustly imprisoned due to a disgusting private for-profit prison system. Obesity is out of control, everybody can see it. Sometimes in tight spaces you can feel it too. Um, but we really have to connect with one another physically, emotionally, digitally, and even spiritually in some cases if we're going to address the great issues of our time. So you filed your paperwork uh, when? Uh, filed in January or February, not sure the exact date, but been declared since then. I've been to Iowa, uh, Nevada, I've been all up and down California. I was supposed to go to Tennessee, but Politicon came up, so I ran into Dave Cola there. Very, uh, very fun chat with him, but uh, like to get to more places in the future. Yeah, he's one of the founders mm -hmm. of, of the Young Turks. You're a Young Turks member? I am a Young Turks member. That's awesome. Look at that. We're both okay. too strong. <laughs> uh, I hope that one day uh, all the people running for president will be Young Turks members. Fingers crossed. Uh, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, so, um, okay, talk to me, Ryan, about how you're gonna win. Because obviously, come on, for let's sure. keep it real. It's gonna be super hard. It's, it's a long shot. We've got four core issues we're really pushing. Uh, antitrust enforcement, reducing income inequality, Medicare for all, and climate change. There's obviously a range of very important issues out there, but we believe these are the key issues that really can push society forward for the better. And so um, some would say, uh, well, look, isn't Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren uh, running on those similar issues? Mm -hmm. Now, they have not declared, let's be mm -hmm. clear about that, but uh, you probably get that from time to time. So what's your answer to that? Let's let the best ideas rise to the top. I have much respect for Bernie, much respect for Elizabeth Warren. They're both very good potential candidates if they do choose to run. Uh, we're just trying to offer a little bit of a different perspective. We differ on some issues here or there, but uh, we'd like to thank you know, our charisma, our charm, our fun, our actual millennial age group would prefer us over an older candidate. Okay, and you're not taking corporate money? No corporate money whatsoever. Okay, well that's good. Uh, and they have not in the past either. And um, so, uh, is is the antitrust thing the main uh, different differentiator? It's you know look they they have varying degrees of being against uh, antitrust as well, mm -hmm. but that's number one on your uh, priority list. So why why do you think that that's the the biggest issue? I think it's the biggest issue. People on the left specifically, we haven't wanted to grasp power like we really need to to make the change in this country, and the corporations 
control everything at this point. People want to say the government ruins stuff if you're on the right or the libertarian side. I'm more of the belief that the market itself is a very corrupt and just naturally corrupting. So we need to break up a lot of the big companies, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Pfizer, Merck, Tyson Foods, Cargill, United Health Insurance, Exxon, Chevron, the list just goes on and on. My two favorites are Service Corporation International, the largest funeral home company mm -hmm. in the United States, and MindGeek, the largest porn website in the country. Oh, you wanna break them up too? Definitely gotta break up. If you wanna end human trafficking, break up that company. They control 70% of all porn sites in this country. And they have no incentive to stop human trafficking. They just put videos on their website and they're allowed to stream whatever they want. See, that's a unique uh, perspective. I had not heard that. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders has sat in that seat, Elizabeth Warren has, and neither one of them talked about that. We, we, we gotta break up the porn industry. Definitely gotta break <laughs> <Okay>. them up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not mm -hmm. sure I'm, uh, I agree with an anti-porn stance, <laughs> but uh, it's an interesting case you make about that company. We're pro-porn, but we want to sh show you that there are no controls in this industry, right? And, Human trafficking is a serious issue run rampant across the, the globe, essentially, right? We can address that if we focus on a company that's exploiting it. So Ryan, uh, what do you do with the companies when you break them up? Uh, well, they can become more localized in their control. Uh, good examples, Facebook, they own WhatsApp. They don't necessarily need to own WhatsApp. They also own Instagram. Do they need to own Instagram? It's not necessarily, let's just go in with a hammer and break them up. Let's take a look at all their individual subsidiaries can they stand on their own? Can they be individually controlled instead of one company holding all the power and all the cards in the situation? And when uh, when they hold that much power, and and we we are to some degree, uh, and I don't mean just uh, those of us doing digital media, but in a sense, the whole world is run by uh, Facebook and Google algorithms. Mm -hmm. um, but isn't it going to be run by algorithms either way? And, uh, and and so what people would say is, look, this is what the market led to. Uh, it led to this kind of consolidation. Uh, and, and people wanted one platform like Facebook where they could all communicate with one another and that's why it rose up. And so if you broke them up, they just rise back up. So how, how would Generally you the case that? has been evident in history, right? Teddy Roosevelt breaks up a bunch of companies through antitrust enforcement by the 1960s, 1970s. You need another rash of uh, antitrust enforcement, specifically with the telecom companies. And now we're in need of it again, right? It's not to say that we don't enjoy the convenience. Amazon is a perfect example. I'm a prime member, just like 200 other million Americans, it seems like. It's convenient and it's easy to use, but they have way too much political influence, way too much economic influence. They do 4% of all sales in this country, period. The whole HQ2 scam, it feels like they put on for Northern Virginia and New York City. They're not delivering on their promises. All these cities have to give out billions of dollars in subsidies, and Amazon doesn't even have to fully come through with any of the promises they're delivering. Right? They have all the cards in the situation. Yeah, they. Um, it's a rare situation where Alexandria Ocasio Cortez mm -hmm. and Tucker Carlson agreed. So you're onto something there. We <laughs> feel it's a universal platform, right? Teddy Roosevelt, first person to do it, Republican, right? It's a. Uh, it's a very bipartisan issue. We just have to sell it a little bit better, I think. Okay, and uh, how about uh, your campaign style? Are, are you going to run negative advertising, strictly positive? Look, I'm not judging either way. I'd probably run negative ads, but uh, and, and and there's going to be a lot of people in the race. I mean, we mentioned Sanders and Warren, but there's going to be 18 other establishment candidates as well. We want to use two things specifically. We want to use humor. I feel like that's. My strength, I like to make a lot of jokes on our social media platform, not at the expense of anybody else, but just to kind of show the absurdity and some issues here or there. And the second thing is, I like to go with the Dalton strategy, which is from Roadhouse, it's a reference. The be nice strategy, just be nice until it's time not to be nice, right? And we will know when it's time not to be nice and when we have to play hard. But otherwise, just constantly be nice to people, that's how you win them over, right? They'll see that. You're the good person at the end of the day, and the other person just trying to smear you. And usually you win over the long term. So the website's ryanfarber.com. Ryanafarber.com. Uh, oh, yes, sorry, ryanafarber.com. There it mm -hmm. is, and the link will be down below in the description box. And you can just click on it to find out more, and you can do donations <laughs> and volunteering as well. Uh, and uh, one last quick question here. Are they letting you into the events that, that all the other candidates are in, like the, the roasts or whatever that they do? 
or pig roast or whatever they folks in <laughs> Iowa do. Yeah, I'm trying to get into those. The initial way we first got in anywhere is we just cold email all the local clubs and say, hey, we're going to be in town between these dates. We would love to come by. Been to a few places. Everybody's been very welcoming in those situations. Some people look at you and they say, oh, you look a little young, right? Well, we just elected a 72-year-old crazy man to the office, right? So people say they want somebody youthful and young, and then when you are that, they, uh, I'm not quite there yet. But uh, we're, we're making our way. Uh, California specifically, we have a whole bunch of clubs we're lined up to speak to over the next couple months. Would love to expand that to a 10-city tour. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2019 specifically, we're trying to raise $10,000 on our GoFundMe page to hit 10 cities in the 10 early primary states so we can kind of really get our name known in the places where early primaries happen. All right, Ryan Farber could be the next president of the United States. Thank you for Thank joining you us. Thank you for having me. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com slash app.